Good morning. True Crown with Sunshine, Christy here. I just thought that I would bring you guys a little bit different Thanksgiving story, if you will. So we are all taught that Thanksgiving is a time for thankfulness. And I agree with that. But being that I am French Irish and Native American and my grandmother was actually the chief's daughter of the Mississippian tribe in Mounds, Illinois. Torn on this subject. And I found it was very interesting that one of my beautiful subs and my beautiful friend from my Tennessee cases, the murder billboard. Ms. Tabitha reached out to me and sent me a very interesting article that I would like to share with you guys. All right, so we'll jump right in. This is called The True Story of Thanksgiving. It means I am marking a Native American national holiday of mourning instead. As a Native American, I have very different understanding of what happened 400 years ago. Today, families across the United States will celebrate Thanksgiving, one of the most beloved holidays of the year. Inspiring by images by happy pilgrims and friendly Indians, families debate politics and watch American football. These Thanksgiving brings extra meaning, as it marks 400 years since a group of British traders and religious separatists, separatists celebrated their first harvest in their new home. However, not all Americans share this joy. As a Native American, I have mixed feelings. I as well. Many of us, including those whose ancestors met and saved that group of settlers from starvation, consider Thanksgiving to be a national day of mourning. We have a very different understanding of what happened 400 years ago. The Thanksgiving most Americans know now evolved from a myth created to unify the country ravaged by a civil war. In October of 1863, President Abraham Lincoln declared a National Day of Thanks, inspired in part by a favorite campaigning by Sarah Josephia Hale, a publisher and a creator of a poem, Mary Had a Little Lamb. As the years passed, Americans associated the Thanksgiving holiday and themselves with the pilgrims and Indians, feasting on turkey and harmony. History tells us a different story. In September 1620, a group of settlers left Plymouth to start their new lives in the colony of Virginia. A storm blew them off the course, and they found themselves more off the lands of the Wakapong people in present day Massachusetts. The newcomers explored their new world, stole food and provisions from the Wampakaw homes. They created a new settlement, named it Plymouth on the side of the Wonkapong village, devastated by disease, warfare caused a large part of earlier visits by European traders. Nearly half of the settlers died that winter, largely due to exposure when spring came. Wampakom Sachem's leaders helped the newcomers and taught them how to rise and raise local crops. Known to the three sisters, Corns, bean, and squash. In November 1621, the settlers celebrated their harvest. When they heard the gunfire, over 90 Wampakong warriors and others joined, nearly 50 settlers, and feasted as well. This was a Kimplunk, one of the harvest festivals celebrated by the Wampakong people each year. Unfortunately, the celebrations and the newcomers' thanks did not last long. Fifty-five years later, in 1676, the settlers killed the son of a Wonkapong, Satchel, who saved them. This was not new. European and later American settlers regularly attacked, exploited Native people that they met. They left Natives fighting foreign diseases, illegal occupation, and removing from their homelands. The American government also created boarding schools that punished Native Americans like my Chickasaw grandfather, who dared to speak their language and practice their culture. Americans justify their actions by defending, defining I'm sorry, Native Americans as people of the past. 
transform and improve by Western civilization. We see today that the UK as well as the US, when, for example, sports fans dress themselves in stereotypical Indians wearing headdresses and doing tomahawk chops to cheer their team on. When asked, sport fans often insist they are honoring the native people like me despite knowing little or nothing about us. Despite the odds, native people have survived and we are still here. We assert our identities and learn our languages and celebrate our cultures. We fight to improve the lives of our people and health of our communities to recover from the centuries of intergenerational trauma inflicted upon us and to prosper in a new world. Significant challenges remain, but we support each other and will prosper. As a Native American who grew up celebrating Thanksgiving, I find the holiday difficult to reconcile. This Thanksgiving, I am joining the National Day of Mourning event, organized by the United American Indians of New England since 1970. With the natives and allies, we, excuse me, we meet at Coles Hill overlooking Pymouth Rock, where the pilgrims first touched these shores, and reflect on the price paid for that faithful day. I will have a turkey and other foods I will grow up with, whilst also trying Wampaconk foods that are most likely eaten with the pilgrims. Deep divisions shape American life. The real Thanksgiving story can replace a myth and shape how Americans themselves in an increasingly diverse world. And this is exactly how I feel. Being that my father's side of the family is Native American and my mother's side of the family were Irish, I was raised and instilled with both histories. However, the U.S. government, society, has pushed the real history of Thanksgiving away. We've forgotten that these lands are stolen that you live on. They're stolen from my ancestors, from many of your ancestors. I ask you today while you sit down and have Thanksgiving dinner with your family and you say your prayers or blessings, you also bless and pray for the people that's homes were stolen from them. Their lands were taken. On my channel, you will find many videos of Native Americans. We have a massive amount of Native Americans missing today. They get no coverage. Unless you see coverage on YouTube. Earlier this year, the FBI released 174 faces. Well, names. Some of them didn't have faces. I sat for two weeks and made posters because none of these people had posters. Maybe one or two had a few posters. If you guys go onto my Facebook and, and follow me, Lynn Johnson, True Crime with Sunshine, you will find Trailing Illume. Her aunt was one of the very first native posters I ever made, and I actually have the honor of saying that she is a friend. Thank you so much for watching. As always, remember, it takes a village to raise a child. If you see something, say something. Watch, listen, and speak. And if you enjoy my content, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Or the other way around, whichever way it goes. So you guys don't miss an update. Make sure to hit that bell. And have a happy Thanksgiving.